So before we get into this, let me know in the comments if Star Ocean content is something that you'd like to see more of. I'm always up for an excuse to play all of the games again. Anyway, let's go. I've done a lot of living since my past video. I started a war with a neighboring empire, uh, lost all my soldiers. Gained the perfect amount back, nobody else can join! I got sick, my voice pitched down, but the content river stays ever flowing. <clears throat> hey everybody. In the most recent Nintendo Direct, we had precisely two announcements, 10 different Mario games, throw it at the wall and see what sticks style, and strangely enough, Star Ocean, which, as we know, are the two video game franchises worth playing. The interesting thing about this announcement is that for the first time ever, we're seeing a big budget Star Ocean remake, this time of the fan favorite and best PS1 RPG, Star Ocean The Second Story. While this isn't the first remake the series has seen, that being the original titles remake on the PSP and eventual update to modern console sans Xbox, these guys suffer. Here's Redfall, next year is Crackdown 4! The difference here is that First Departure, while a solid remake in its own right, sought to mimic the style of the second story, a game which was already very old. This remake is sporting that sweet, sweet HD 2D Octopath vibe, but with a slight heavier emphasis on the 3D environments, a style that feels really faithful to the original game, just more. The second story also had its own PSP remaster in the form of Second Evolution and had some gameplay changes, fixed some bugs, and tossed in Welch so every game could have that claim to fame. But from those changes came a shift in the vibe. Characters were represented differently than the original PS1 translation. Combat was made easier, music was freaking butchered due to the change in sound card. But to say it was a bad remaster is a stretch. There are loads of obvious improvements alongside what comes down to personal preference. I find it really interesting that this remake is taking on the name of the original release, implying that the core of the experience will pull from the second story. Will changes made in Second Evolution stick around? What should we expect in the way of new content? Will it be good? A good remake? Per chance. I'll get to all that in due time, but first, a quick history lesson for those who aren't in the loop. Star Ocean is a long-running action JRPG franchise that spawned from Tales of Fantasia after a chunk of the developers wanted to take the series down a different route. They founded their own company called Tri-Ace and released the first Star Ocean as a sort of swan song to the SNES. It was big, beautiful, and sported an impressive level of player choice, things like optional cutscenes, dungeons, and characters. Due to its scale and timing, it never got an official release outside of Japan, making this a really bad name for a sequel. Sequel, Star Ocean The Second Story released for the PS1 and upped the ante on all fronts. Hailed as the peak of the series by many, but not me, it was a big critical and financial success for Tri-Ace, cementing the series as a favorite in Japan. Till the End of Time was the third release, but after a less than stellar Japanese launch due to some real polish problems, we had to wait a while for the director's cut to release in other territories. This game shifted the focus from menu depth and player choice to a more fleshed out campaign and reactionary combat system. This game is my personal favorite and gets a lot of love, though the consensus isn't as universal as the second story. The series then had a story. Releasing next was Star Ocean The Last Hope, which aimed to steer itself away from Till the End of Time in hopes of avoiding some of the controversial pitfalls that game's story fell into. What came out of that desire was a story that was just as batshit insane and off the walls, but was now extremely stupid, and a lot of people really disliked it. However, the combat and exploration were a huge step forward for the franchise. The game sold extremely well in Japan. It is still, to this day, the best-selling Xbox game of all time over there, which blows my mind. Like, really? They didn't show up for Gears 5? This game has seen its share of appreciation as the years have gone on, and this combat is still spoken of in JRPG conversations. While it isn't as airtight of a product as previous games, it's still quite good. The PSP was then serial assaulted by First Departure and Second Evolution, a remake and enhanced port of the first two games respectively. This is the only version of the original game ever made available outside of Japan, and unfortunately Second Evolution is stuck on the PSP despite being available on the Japanese PS4 store for years. It's, it's, it's hard to talk. We then take a step back for Star Ocean, Integrity, and Faithlessness, widely considered as the weakest entry in the franchise. Due to time constraints and budget restrictions, this game is shorter and far less complex than its predecessors. While its combat is decent, and the characters have a good layer of depth displayed through the optional private action system, this was a pretty blatant step sideways for the franchise, and it didn't sell people on what the future had to offer for it. However, the claims of underperformance were greatly exaggerated with a 
metric ton of sales over the years and a small budget to begin with, this game most certainly ended up turning a profit, evident by the fact that six years later in 2022 we were graced with Star Ocean The Divine Force, which really feels like what Star Ocean 5 wanted to be the whole time. With an insane combat system that rivals the best of the best, an expansive cast of characters and areas to explore, a story that focuses heavily on the space politics and fleshing out certain aspects of the world and characters, this game had a nice spot between adhering to what made the first three games so top tier while also pushing the series into a new era. While far from perfect, its implementation of a dual protagonist structure wasn't nearly as impactful as what the second story had to offer, alongside some polished problem Star Ocean 3 style, especially in the visual department, the voice acting and cast of characters were a huge step up over what the previous games had to offer, and is some of the best stuff to come out of the genre in a hot minute. Putting the series back on the proverbial quality map. Unsurprisingly to me personally, the game didn't review super well with mainstream critics, however, I, I just don't think that really matters anymore. Star Ocean has been out of the mainstream for a long time now, its design philosophies attract a certain type of player, and this game struck a chord with most of the fan base, so in the end it was absolutely a win. It doubled the size of the subreddit, so... I mean, that's gotta count for something, right? Raymond, despite looking like a total dweeb, is probably my favorite protagonist in the whole series. He's a great character, as is Nina, Albert, and JJ. Overall, I'd say it's better than 4, but not quite as strong as 2 and 3 due to the aforementioned polish problem. 8 out of 10. I buy a director's cut. There was also a mobile game that, while now defunct, made a ton of money that used to back fund Star Ocean 6, that's metal as hell. And there was also a Game Boy Color sequel to the second story with a remake on Japanese mobile phones. These are not essential reading, you're fine, but they are rather funky. Alright, you get all that? Over the past 7-8 to eight years, Trius has been making a point to re-release their classics on modern consoles, many times with some decent visual updates and new features. But strangely enough, Star Ocean 2 was absent outside of Japan for the longest time, which was a huge frustration because as someone who's played it, I can shout its praises as loudly as I want, but it's a tough sell and physical copies can be pretty hard to come by. I mean, this one isn't even priced with US currency! I'm also gonna go out on a limb here and spread a little bit of a hot take. Despite these two being by far my favorite entries in the franchise, they're the two that have aged the worst. The original second story has abysmal voice acting, laughable CGI cutscenes, and also gets brutally difficult as you approach the second act. That last point is not necessarily a flaw, I'll get more into that in a bit, but it is indeed a barrier to entry for potential new players. And there are other things too, some skills are busted, some bosses break the rules the game enforces and employ strategies that are laughably unfair to the player, the soundboard can bug out and be straight up uncompletable, Shisato's favorite food is unobtainable, you can force checks, and if you botch the skill check, you lose money every time you take a step. Not a flaw, I just think that's hilarious. While Second Evolution changed and added to many aspects of the original, the core experience is still relatively unchanged. It still undoubtedly feels like you're playing a PS1 game. So while I still would have salivated at the thought of spending my money on a re-release that I can read, this remake throws the doors way open, giving this absolute classic a chance to re-establish itself as a god-tier retro RPG, while making way for new fans to hop on the ride. Because if this sells well, I guarantee we're gonna be seeing more Star Ocean in the near future. Not that it ever really ever went away. So now, I ask the big question. Will Star Ocean The Second Story R be a good remake? Well, based off of what we've seen alongside Triace's history, I believe so, yes. I have this strange, unwavering trust in Trice to always deliver a product that will adhere to my particular taste in RPG. I like games with strange levels of depth, hidden content, brutal approaches to difficulty. That is every game that they make ever. And as a result, I will say that I prefer the original second story to its PSP remaster. And that's the key here. This is a remake of the original game, not Second Evolution. This game is aiming to innovate and improve alongside callback to the original experience. That raises the question, how much of Second Evolution is going to be revived in this third go-around? Many changes in Second Evolution resulted in a much easier experience. They introduced three-hit combos for the attackers without properly balancing out the gameplay to fit, thus drastically changing the necessity of placement and intelligent killer move execution. However, this remake is over 10 years removed from what Second Evolution put down, and they're making very clear this isn't simply a port up or visual overhaul of what they accomplished before. They're changing quite a bit, and I guess we can start at the visuals. This game looks very, 
very nice. This might be my favorite look this HD 2D style has taken on yet. With Akiman back on character portraits, everybody looks as beautiful as ever. The world on display is very clearly faithful to the original game's vision without having to rely on pre-rendered backgrounds and the stiff camera angles that the style enforces. Even through this modern sheen though, the art style stays intact for two primary reasons. Many scenes shown thus far actually aim to recreate the original shots with an added level of cinematography. This includes the combat as well. This is all tied together by the original sprite work being nearly untouched, which is perfect. This guy right here is iconic. He deserves to remain unchanged for eternity. I really hope they keep all of like the strange additions to the sprite work that goes completely against the actual character designs like Noel having bunny ears. From what I can tell, the sprite work is modeled off of second evolution and has added frames for extra combos, which is good considering how that's the one aspect of the remake that didn't need to be changed visually. This presentation is very much what the original game was, but more. Modernized, you can say. Exactly how it should be. Speaking of the combat, the little that was shown off looks very different than what I was expecting, but not in a bad way. It seems that Tri-Ace is putting in quite a bit of extra work to make this combat system feel more alive, more active and engaging than the original title. Which is a godsend, because while I believe these original two Star Ocean titles are fun in their simplicity, I'll take innovation where it's sorely needed. The action RPG genre has far more engaging things to offer nowadays than run up, attack, pull special move, hope you don't get stun locked. Don't even get me started on magic users, they just suck in general. However, whether or not the combat functions as a good remake of the original combat system will lie within the difficulty, because like I said before, Second Evolution toned that down and it wasn't in the greatest ways. Now it is very obvious that the three hit combos from Second Evolution are returning, evident by the fact that they showed them, alongside the devs entirely overhauling how the stun system works to hopefully be a little bit more predictable. There's also a system that allows you to call upon characters not in the active party to pull off special attacks, much like how Tales of Arise gave special utilities to everyone, including those not active. This will all hopefully give the game a few extra added layers of depth to the hands-on experience, while still keeping the core of the combat simple and satisfying. So like I said before, the success is going to come down to the difficulty. If the added abilities in second evolution led to imbalance, this new stuff will most certainly snap the game in half if the enemy strength is not completely overhauled. Now don't quote me on this quote, Silken Era, but at the very least, mid-game bosses will be seeing difficulty buffs. This is all fine and dandy, but I do hope they make the conscious choice to keep the end game really brutal, just maybe not as horridly stress-inducing. Just a little bit stress-inducing. This article also goes into how the frame data for moves have been altered alongside the time-freezing abilities like big magic spells being less emphasized. Hopefully that means that the game won't be stopping every 15 seconds to show me a pretty little animation. I know that's just how the first two Star Ocean games work, but it's extremely hard to go back to. Just explode the screen a bit faster, please. I have to pick up my child at 3. Now this is all in an attempt to put the game in line with other modern action games, and that's undoubtedly a good mindset to have. Also strange for a company that tends to be very headstrong in their ways, but Eh, whatever, I'm down. Not only are they going back and fixing a lot of the rough edges of the original combat system, but they're also making it significantly more engaging. That's all good. That's what a remake should do. The gameplay flow and overall feel are most likely going to be very different than the original as a result, though. The second story is a brutal game. If a boss wants to wipe the floor with you, it doesn't matter if the game allows them to logically, that bastard will leave your combo and sunlock you into submission. This is hilarious, but it isn't necessarily what newcomers to a series are too keen on. So hopefully the game can find that proper balance in between welcoming in new players, but also maintaining what made that original game so brutal, and as a result, so satisfying to get through. The Japanese website hosts some gameplay videos to show off the new spell animations and combat encounters. The enemies look to have quite a bit of HP to compensate for the stronger player team, and overall it looks to have a similar, albeit more hectic, flow. Previously hard to hit attacks like Mere Slice are pulled off with ease. There are particle effects going off everywhere, my eyes. They're burning, but honestly, I just keep getting too distracted by how good the backgrounds look. The overworld exploration looks very similar to something like Nino Kuni, which had highly detailed, well-designed overworlds to explore. So let's hope they toss in some chests in the corners for the curious. Another thing they mentioned in the article were added side quests that will allow you to get strong pieces of equipment and such. This leads me to another big question. This game is full of huge item creation subsystems, hidden quest lines, and missable events. How much of that is going to be changed to emphasize, de-emphasized, and and most of all, streamlined. First off, I hope they change very little. The second story has such a fun item creation system and allows for such stupid things to happen. Fun fact, the original English voiceover sees everyone calling the rideable bunny Barney. Come here, Barney. Come here, Barney. Hey, Barney. 
They had a $5 bill and a pack of Fritos for this localization effort, didn't they? There are also entire quest lines that are easily missable, requiring you to really pay attention to what locations are available when, alongside activating as many private actions as possible. It is easy to go entire playthroughs and miss seeing certain characters at all. This sort of cryptic yet layered quest progression allows for different locations to be used in multiple interesting ways. The replayability is off the charts with this entry in particular, so in some sense I hope they leave a lot of that quest progression cryptic. However, personally, I wouldn't mind if they included that one really important admissible event in the town of Click as a main story scene, just so unknowing players don't get burned later down the line. Much of what needed to be changed in the original second story came down to polish. The skill system, item creation, expansive recruitment options, the snappy combat, they all work. Fix up those broken and jagged edges and you could probably call it a day. Going above and beyond to forge a new, more engaging combat system with overhauled frame data and intricacies, alongside new side content is really nice. I just hope it's all intelligently designed and carefully placed throughout the experience so it doesn't undermine what makes the original so expansive and difficult. Instead, I hope they balance the experience to feel on par with the original so I can come back in five months and say that this is without a doubt the definitive way to experience Star Ocean 2. There are always going to be people that swear by the original until death do them part, and that's fine. I might end up being one of those people, but I really hope I can objectively say that this is the best way to play it. Like I said before, I have a lot of faith in Triace as developers to stick to their guns and make games that are difficult, complex, and creative in design. The second story is their magnum opus, where they struck gold all those years ago. And I believe they'll be careful when translating all of what it has to offer into this new generation. They've made clear this remake is spawning both from the growing interest in the series and the fans who have screamed out their windows through megaphones for the past five years with what appears to be a decent budget this time around, alongside the project already having the framework laid out two times in the past. Their job is to refine that experience to a T. When I think they're gonna pull it off. And I will be right here when it drops to tell everybody that I was right. And to the small percentage of people thinking, Ham, my boy, my guy, my supreme leader. What if this game sucks? What if all of your predictions are wrong and it's gonna be a terrible remake? You're so dumb and ugly and, well, I'm gonna kill you. First off, rude. And I probably should future-proof this video in case things do crash and burn. Hmm. My final take is that Star Ocean, the second story R, will be the weirdest game ever.